I'm going to go ahead with the meeting beginning ritual. 起立，面向佛堂，参加三鞠躬、一鞠躬、再鞠躬、三鞠躬，参加多一点传十一鞠躬，开班一鞠躬，请坐下。Please be seated. Wonderful. And and once again, good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you happen to be at the moment. And welcome to the June 17th installment of our online study group. It's a, a joy to see everyone here as usual. It never ceases to、uh, amaze me that we've managed to do what we've managed to do with this.、Um, and I've, I've been doing this almost every week for a long time. It, it's still just astounding to me that, that we have as many participants as we do in as many places as we do. This morning, I, I wanted to talk about karma and other four-letter words. <laughs>、uh, and as it turns out, you know, there there really is is quite a bit of confusion uh, uh, about what what karma is and and how it works and what it does.、Uh, very often, I, I find that it gets used interchangeably and nearly synonymously. Uh, with destiny or preordination or fate or、uh, cosmic justice, and there there are elements of of those concepts in, involved in karma, but that's a, a long way from the whole story. And so, in half an hour, we're going to see if we can't see if we can't hit the high points and、uh, maybe create a little clarity and understanding. There are, there are two terms. Uh, that that I use with a fair degree of frequency to describe、uh, human existence in karmic terms.、Uh, one of those is the term karma itself, and, and the other one is is the term the karmic path.、Um, I, I heard in, in one of the Matrix movies、uh, a, a really a really cool uh, 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 explanation of what karma is、uh, as as Neo's trapped in this subway station you know, with a group of programs who are attempting to leave, and and、uh, one of the programs uh, uh, is is speaking with Neo. And Neo says, "You believe in karma?" And the gentleman says, "Well, karma is a word like love.、Uh, it's a way of saying what you are here to do." <laughs> That's a, a an appropriate, albeit abbreviated. Uh, term for what karma is. Karma is often confused with with destiny, fate, or preordination, predestination,、uh, that sense of universal justice or vengeance. But it it really is、uh, the term for what are you here to do. the The confusion, I believe, stems in, in this case very largely. From the incomplete Western understanding of what karma is,、uh, the the term has been around since ancient times,、uh, since the 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 Hindu and Vedic teachings from India that gave rise to uh, uh, the Buddhist and and Taoist teachings、uh, some millennia later. It's a very very old term,、uh, and it has a number of connotations that revolve around it. But one of the perceptions is you know, in the West that that karma kind of supersedes free will and, and free choice,、um, or that it is、uh, strictly the consequences that we pay for our life decisions, and, and that that concept that we hold on to in the West is only only partially accurate at best. The truth of the matter is is that that every Every human life on this planet has a purpose. That's an absolute truth. There's absolutely no denying it. There, there may be people who say that that their life is strictly random, that they exist because they were born and for no other reason. But at some point,、uh, even even the complete naysayers have to acknowledge that that their life has a purpose and a function. That there are certain things that that they have have done or accomplished or been involved in 
that, that absolutely were supposed to happen. And that's part of that purpose. The, the term karmic path is, is the term that I use to describe that path in life that leads, hopefully, ultimately to the fulfillment of that life purpose. And, and as with, with every other path, and one of the main reasons I utilize this term, as with all paths, there are side roads and intersections and opportunities to diverge from the, the, the path itself into a different direction, some of which lead to our destination and some of which do not. And, and at any point in time, any of us can choose to wander down one of those side roads or to, to, to change our direction at an intersection or uh, to simply blaze a new trail through a, a heretofore unknown piece of the wilderness uh, in our in our life, and, and those decisions may alter our karmic karmic path significantly, or they may help us for a period of time attempt to dodge uh, that karmic path to 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 willfully know and knowingly uh, avoid walking into that 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 life purpose. And so the supposition that that we don't have the ability to choose the path that we take, that is the 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 supposition of predestination is kind of a kind of a mistaken belief. And the supposition that there is a, a predetermined outcome that we are absolutely doomed to to run into that the outcome is is predetermined that is the 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 perception of of fate uh, is also mistaken and so although every life has a purpose a distinct and, and very definite karmic path we absolutely can choose whether or not and and when and to what extent we decide to follow that path this understanding is is the understanding of the Tao. And the Tao itself doesn't take sides. It doesn't force choices. It it doesn't uh, control the outcome. It simply exists, and we exist there within it. We can choose either to fulfill the life purpose or not. Now. The other concept involved is that of universal justice, and there there is is definitely an element of universal justice in karma, but that isn't its sole function. If we all take a few moments and look back over the path of our lives, we will see over and over and over again. Where, where we have inherited or reaped the consequences of our actions, both positive and negative, time and time again in the here and now. That is, is the other aspect of karma, and, and one that we, we tend to ignore, one that we, we tend to uh, mislabel rather continually. Instant karma, if you will, <laughs> uh, borrowed from the Beatles song, is, is also a truth. And, and that truth is, is that karma is active in the here and now. Okay? More often than not, the karma for our choices and our actions is, is, is really immediate and, and very, very certain. It's almost predictable in a lot of cases. Okay? Because with a little observation and some life experience, one can examine a, uh, an occurrence or an event and, and make some, some, some pretty sound uh, predictions about, about what's going to occur, right? If somebody's in the process of robbing a bank, for instance, uh, one can reasonably predict that there, there's uh, going to be a legal issue for the individual involved in that. If someone is uh, appropriately charitably involved, one can reasonably predict 
that there will be a, a positive outcome in there someplace. And so karma is not not just a purely punitive thing. It's evident in both the, the positive and negative outcomes of our lives, and we have a lot of influence over how that process works. Good actions and a, a pure heart accrue positive karma that is, is beneficial to us and that, that helps us to continue to be uh, uh, a good and pure-hearted person, if you will. Negative actions and an evil heart bring about and accrue negative karma. It is uh, quite simply, in very simplistic terms, the law of cause and effect. So does does karma influence and affect reincarnation? I, I actually get this question pretty frequently. I'm a firm believer in reincarnation. I don't see anything at all unreasonable about that com con concept. However, uh, it's a matter of faith, and so I can only share with you what I believe. I, I can't tell you on the, on this particular question what's absolutely the truth or what absolutely is going to happen. Uh, none of us really knows yet. However, in, in, in my humble opinion, uh, I believe that, that karma absolutely affects our, our rebirth in, in the context of, of lessons unlearned. That is, uh, whatever knowledge and wisdom uh, that we're lacking when we, when we leave this life and prepare to enter the next, um, in order to achieve enlightenment, is presented to us again in subsequent lifetimes until we finally learn it. I, I believe that because I've seen it happen uh, in my life and in the lives of others without the necessity of having to die first. In other words, this is not a, a discrete after-death event. Uh, it's something that happens in the here and now. I've, I've come to refer to this process as the universal wrecking ball of enlightenment because as, as, as we resist the lessons that we're supposed to, to, to get a handle on, the lessons come back uh, with more force and more intensity until eventually in the case of, of the lessons that are, are critical to the path of our lives, uh, the karmic wrecking ball of enlightenment comes through and knocks our entire life down for a while, and we get the opportunity to put things back together a piece at a time, and, and this time maybe do it more correctly. Um, that event has happened to me. Uh, it was actually catastrophic <laughs> and not very much fun. I've seen it happen in the lives of others, and it was equally as catastrophic and not very much fun for them as well. And what you'll learn after a, a time or two of going through that is that it is far and away easier to learn the karmic lessons that we're meant to learn while they're smaller and easier to manage and not as painful than it is to wait until the karmic wrecking ball of enlightenment roars through our lives and, and we have to put everything back together uh, from the leftover rubble of, of what we thought was a worthwhile existence. It, it bears paying attention to our karmic path and the lessons that we're supposed to know. Now, I, I do not believe that even a very evil person will be reborn one day as an amoeba or pond scum or an earthworm and have to work their way back up to human at some point. Um, there are certain sects of the Buddhist traditions uh, that, that do believe that, that's, uh, that their relatives are reincarnated as certain types of, of animals. Um, and there are a few humorous stories one can, can Google about that sort of thing. Uh, but that's, that's, I, I don't really have a spot for that in, in my, in my particular, uh, set of, of beliefs and, and, and in my faith, but I can't absolutely tell you it doesn't happen. So one of these days, if you step on an amoeba, it might be me. 
I, I, I don't think, but you never know. More, more to the point, Laozi and Chuangzi, both uh, Laozi more indirectly, Chuangzi more directly, teach us that, that we need to be focused on our, our present life, on the present moment, on the here and now, and that we ought to live each day as a joyous, peaceful event, you know, filled with, with positive thoughts and actions and events and, and a, a, accruing uh, that, that positive karma, not by intent, but by, but by living. And with our attention focused on, on the spiritual path that we've chosen for our lives that sets us on our, our most positive set of outcomes and, and our most joyous way of living. I found that that if if we pursue that kind of a life, that the the karma for that life will pretty much take care of itself. Karma is not a a huge intrusive thing. It rather is uh, the follow along to the things that we do, the thoughts we think, the actions that we become involved in, and, and the motives. Uh, of our lives, one of the things I, I did not put in my notes that I think is is extremely important when we talk about uh, karma and other four letter words is that that very often it isn't so much what we do that accrues the karma, but why we did it, the motivation behind the action. I think, for instance that an, an individual in a, an extremely desperate spot who perhaps steals some food from a, a cart or a store or something in, in order to, to eat and feed their kids uh, is, is not accruing a lot of negative karma there because of the circumstances of the event and the, and the motivation of the event. Whereas uh, someone who steals your TV set and your jewelry uh, accrues perhaps much more negative karma because that motivation is is simply to acquire stuff, if that's the motivation. I will say in the same breath, I am absolutely not the person to judge the motives. I know what my motives are. I can't look at another person and and explain to you what their motives are. We all have to be responsible for that on our own. But I, I wonder very often if that perhaps isn't one of the reasons why the Yuan Dao as an organization doesn't make a, a really huge deal out of the total elimination of desires and attachments. Instead of, uh, instead of making a big deal out of eliminating those sorts of things, they make a big deal out of moderating them, which I personally find um, much, more, uh, much more reasonable. So, you know, karma, karma exists. It absolutely does. We need to, to keep that thought in mind, but we also need not to stress and worry over it and, and have a lot of anxiety about it continually because that's just, just not a good way to carry on life. And whether we call it karma or something else, we have to recognize that it still exists. I'm not sure what all of the various and sundry names for it there are in the various traditions, but like the example from the Matrix, what it is is a word. What's important is what the what the word implies. And in this case, uh, we can we can say the word implies what you are here to do. Worrying about that karma. Yeah, I found is not nearly as effective in life as just doing the best we can to live a, a joyous, positive life and, and, and concurrently treating others with some respect and some compassion and some kindness because those things all by themselves uh, accrue the positive karma that, that we're hoping uh, to enjoy in our lives. I think paying particular attention to our spiritual path and to our spiritual activities 
uh, helps to accrue that positive karma. And and I go back to the the rituals and etiquette of the Iguan Dao once again uh, for guidance on that, where it says that the time required for our spiritual activities uh, is usually much less than for our secular activities, but the spiritual activities are no less important. I think everybody needs some kind of a spiritual path in order to balance out uh, their lives. Yeah, I find that extremely helpful to me. Hopefully you all find it helpful to yourselves. Um, and, and I think it's important for us to examine uh, the, the spiritual nature of human life and where that goes and where it ends up and how it all works and, and where we feel our place is with, within that. And karma is a part of, of where we are within that grand spiritual plan. Walt says, okay. Bill, do you okay. have a single karmic path or can it change as we proceed through life? It not only can, it does. Yeah. Uh, we gain wisdom and experience in our lives, and as we as we go down that path, it changes all the time. Okay. The, the perspective uh, on the Tao side that I have learned over the years is that when when you are not really clear, when you have not cultivated spirituality, it is as if you are walking forward in a thick fog. So you can't really see what's ahead of you very far. Therefore, you are careful to just follow the markings of the road, whatever road you happen to be on. And when there is a branch in the road coming up, you don't get much of a chance to make a choice and you don't get to see what's further down to help you make a better choice. You know, should I go left, should I go right? But the more you cultivate your spirituality, the more this fog will dissipate so that you can see further and further ahead. That gives you the ability to determine, you know, the state, uh, the situation that you are about to head into on the path, and when there's a fork in the road coming up, it gives you the ability to make a better choice. You know, hmm, the one, the, the path to the right, that looks like a lot of traffic. You know, a lot of, plenty of red lights that I see, people are hitting their brakes, maybe I should go left. You know, stuff like that. Let's go ahead and do the meeting ending ritual, everybody. Chili. Mian Xiao Huo Tang. Sija San Jigong, Yi Jigong. Sai Jigong. San Jigong. Sija Go Ting Chuan Xi Jigong. Xie Ban Yi Jigong. Well done, everybody. Thank you so much.